There's an aircraft configuration malfunction I practice for every 12 months. I've never seen it in my entire career in the real world. What is that malfunction? Let's take a look. Tower United 1176, visual to it, right? Okay, the first player here, and the only player, is United 1176. It's a Boeing 737 on short final to runway 28 right at San Francisco International Airport. I've been in and out of this airport dozens and dozens of times over the years. There's parallel runways, 28 left, 28 right. Um, they're at that point where they're doing their final configuration of the aircraft. Uh, most likely the gear is down and they're setting their final flaps. At some point here, something goes wrong with their configuration and they ask to go around. We don't know what it is yet, and they're kind of coy about what it is, which is kind of a head scratcher. Let's see. Could I have three right now, 1176? Hey, everything's normal so far. Tower United 1176 going around. 1176, Director. Okay, that's not normal. Why'd they go around? Get a heading for 1176. 1176 runway runway heading up to 3000. So runway heading to 3000 is a normal go around. Uh, almost every major airport in the US and around the world will block out that space straight ahead. And so it's not unusual that they would get that. So they read back runway heading to 3000. Uh, and uh, but I'm curious of why they went around. United 1176. Thanks. Don't know yet. 1176 is the reason for the go around. Yeah, good question. Can you repeat that again for 1176? 1176, what was the reason for the go-around? We just need to run a couple checks here for 1176. Okay, that's not the reason for the go-around. The question was, what's the reason for the go-around, not we have to run a couple of checklists. So I'm kind of curious about why they're being sort of coy here. Now, I think I know why, and I'll explain it in a minute. When we find out what the actual malfunction is, I, I'm going to... I'll back up a little bit and explain why I think they were coy with it. And I think I might have been as well, but let's see. Don't answer my question. That's fine. <laughs> you know, I'll hand you off. They're, they're climbing out now. All right, climbing to 5,000 now. Still don't know what it is. Okay, here's the second question. What was the reason for the go-around, right? And everybody kind of wants to know. They've got to start, Not it's not that they're filling out their paperwork, but they got to get the ball rolling back at the airport for what potential emergency this might be. Now, they haven't declared an emergency yet, so we're not quite there yet, but everybody's trying to gather the information, right? And the information's kind of being uh, held close to the vest here. So let's see. Uh, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. Like, okay, why? At uh, departure United 1176, uh, we'd like to declare an emergency at this time. Many, many, many. We just had a, a flap control malfunction. Ah, okay. There it is. So a flap control malfunction. I've practiced for this every year when I go down for training, and there are a whole bunch of different types of flap control malfunctions, and I'll explain those in a minute. But uh, this is a, an emergency for sure, depending on uh, the severity of it. Now, why were they holding on to that information up to this point? Not really sure. Um, clearly, when the other voice comes on, you've heard me say this before, it's almost always the captain. So probably the first officer was talking on the radios. The captain now is going to go, ah, I'll declare an emergency. I, hold on, I got it. And the few times I've declared an emergency as a captain over the years, I've just said to my first officer, Here, let me do that. So I'll, I'll get everything straight. Because uh, I'm kind of anticipating the questions that they're going to throw at me, and I want to answer those questions before they actually ask them. So this guy says, mayday, 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 which he should. And then he says, we got a flap malfunction. And he says, a, a flap control malfunction. I'll explain the difference between a control malfunction and some of the others um, that you could get. But let's follow and see how they handle this from this point. Uh, we just need to run a quick checklist. If you can just give us that certain area, and uh, we'll go with that. All right. Always a checklist, Ren. Uh, are you able to climb to 6,000? Yeah, he says yes. Maintain 6,000, fighting 200. Okay, so they're getting him turned out over the water now. Up to 6,000 feet. 
So while they're running their checklist, let me stop here for a second and talk about the potential different issues that could take place with a flap malfunction. Now on this channel, we've covered a whole lot of engine failures. We've covered landing gear problems. I mean, you, you name it, uh, smoke in the cabin, uh, the, the, all sorts of issues. I've never once covered a uh, flap malfunction. They just don't happen all that often. I do practice for them every year. Now, the different types of flaps that we have on the airplane, there are leading edge flaps called slats, and there are trailing edge flaps. And those are the ones that we normally think of as flaps, the ones that come off the back. When you're sitting in the, looking out the window and you're just about to land and you hear the motor start to run, you hear a little ring like that, and all of a sudden the flaps start to come out the back. Why do we need the flaps? We need the flaps to create more lift on the wing. So we're changing, in fact, the shape of the wing. We're making it larger and we're making it larger in the back. Now, what you missed just prior to those coming out was that most larger airplanes, and I'm saying, you know, 757, 767, Airbus, you know, any sort of large passenger airplane, they're going to have a, a leading edge flap that comes out as well. So that's just a, a slat that comes out in the front, right? It's all one piece along the leading edge of the wing. That starts the process. That's flaps one, right? That's the, the one degree of flaps. I have flaps five, 15, 20, 25, and 30 on my Boeing 777. Those are all the trailing edge flaps. We want those flaps to come out so we create more uh, lift on the wing. We also are creating more drag, so that means more power. So we don't want to fly around like that forever. Right? We'd never make it to Europe. We wouldn't be able to take enough gas. But when we want to slow down to land, we want to change that wing. So we, the, the, as they're coming in to San Francisco, they're configuring the airplane. They get a couple of degrees of flap out. Then they lower the gear. Then they do the rest of their flaps. And somewhere during that probably rest of the flaps procedure, something went wrong. Now, here's the things that could go wrong. Uh, you could have a leading edge flap that doesn't come out. That would be the very first thing. Then you could have a trailing edge flap that either gets stuck and doesn't come out, just gets stuck in a position. Let's say you want it to go to 20, but it stays at 15 and doesn't move. You would get a, a warning on your screen, flaps stuck, right? And it would lead you to a checklist. Uh, it may be, and this is the most serious of them all, a flap asymmetry. A flap asymmetry is when one side, the left wing or the right wing come out and the other wing doesn't. And so you want to stop that as quickly as possible because the airplane will start to turn. And you now you've got a controllability issue with the airplane potentially, so you don't really want that to go any further than it needs to. So as soon as you get a flap asymmetry idea, like the airplane's starting to turn and you're not turning it, or you get that warning up on your screen, you take the flap handle and you put it, you put it back where it was but back to that, the last setting that you have it at and leave it there, don't touch it, because you don't want the flaps to come out any further. So you want to arrest the, the asymmetry as soon as you can. So I'm going to show you here uh, in a minute a few checklists that we use, and it, it can get rather complicated. I think that's why they were being a little coy with what was going on. They weren't 100% sure, and they wanted to get it all, the, the, like their ducks in a row before they said anything. So let's follow up now on how they handle this. 176, flighting 170. All right, down to 170. Working on checklist now at this point. And you'll see there's a lot of them. Contact NorCal 133.905. All right. NorCal 1176, 6000. 1176, NorCal, Sarah Scott, Simeter 2993, same tension. 2993, I'd like to run some more checklists and then get vectored back around to San Francisco eventually. Yeah, 1176. 1176, resume normal speed, flying 140. Normal speed heading 140, United 1176. Okay, so normal speed. I want to talk about that for a minute. That's one of the complicated factors in a flap problem. So they realized it as they were coming in to land. They did a go around. That's a complicated procedure in and of itself, and we don't do a lot of go arounds. So go arounds can get out of control rather quickly. So, but they're doing a go around. At, but they've got a flap problem. You don't want to overspeed the flap configuration that you have. You also don't want to get too slow, and based on the flap configuration that you have so it's you got to be really careful you got it's a lot of good stick and rudder stuff going on during that go around now they're climbing out and they're getting you know vectors to turn around and come back to the airport they're working on checklists but you really 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 want to make sure that you fly the airplane and you don't get too slow and you don't get too fast you might have a tighter uh, airspeed window with a flap problem than you would with any other type of problem on the aircraft so those are the things they're up against meanwhile they're talking to the flight attendants they're talking to dispatch they're they're pulling out the multiple checklists and they're they're trying to comply with what air traffic control is telling there's a lot going on in that cockpit. 
76 and plan for an ILS 2A right. We'll plan for an ILS 2A right. Yeah, I love it. Right, same approach they were on before. They were on the visual for 2A right now, the ILS. So here they come. We'll, we'll fast forward it a little bit for you. Yeah, 1176, we'd like to get a, the ILS approach back into San Francisco. All right. So they're also building the approach. Flying zero four zero vectors to final expected ILS to a right. Return zero four zero expecting vectors for ILS United eleven seventy six. So the first time in, they were just doing the visual to a right, which is just look outside and land. Now they're putting the ILS approach in the box. So somebody's heads down on the computer doing that. Then both pilots have to brief the approach. They have to talk about all the details on that approach. Let me show you, while they're doing that, all of the different flap checklists, okay? This, this is where it gets kind of uh, crazy, all right? Um, this first one uh, is off of my airplane, and it's a flaps drive checklist. It's kind of short. It's the one down at the bottom. And uh, there's really only a couple of items. You kind of got to read it, that out loud, but both pilots have to pay attention to that. Okay, the next checklist now uh, looks like this. All right, you've got a flaps primary fail. Uh, and it, then we would, here's how we would handle it in the cockpit. Let's say it was a flaps primary fail light that came on. I would have to pull up the checklist and I would have to read word for word condition. Flap primary mode is failed. Number one, ground prox flap override switch override. What's the ground prox flap override switch? It's a switch right on the dashboard of the airplane that overrides uh, a warning that I would get. It's a, an audible warning and a, a verbal warning over the computer when I get too slow for a particular flap configuration. Why is that important? Because I'm gonna land with flaps 20 in my airplane not the normal 25 or 30. So if I start to get, I start to slow down for flaps 20, it's going to give me warnings. I don't want to hear those. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing flaps 20 on purpose. So I hit that override button and then it says, note, plan more uh, time uh, for the flap, slower flap operation because it takes longer for the flaps to get out in that particular failure. And it says use flaps 20 and VREF 20 for landing. This uh, gives improved ground go around performance, determine advisory landing distance. Now that last, last little note there means I have to get into my iPad and I have to look at how long of runway I need to land with flaps 20 at the weight I'm at. All of that takes time. So when she says we're working checklists, those are the checklists that she's working. Flap slat control, lots the same. Some of it's a little bit different. They add a couple more steps in. All right, let's take a look at that. There's another checklist. Look at this one. All right, this one's got five things on it. It's got airspeed low, but it's also got a uh, configuration for doors. And look at the bottom. It's got a configuration for flaps. So when I bring that page up, I've got to, I've got to make sure I don't grab the wrong checklist. I got to go all the way down to the bottom of this one and I got to make sure I get, grab the config flap checklist, right? So again, that's what the training's about. When you go through all the training, uh, it teaches you those little snags where you can get caught on something. So this crew is really good. They're on top of it. They've gotten around kind of quickly here. They've got the ILS approach in. They're configured now for landing. They've got all their briefs out of the way. Let's see how they do. 1176, this made from Bravo. It's now crying. Yep. They got to bring up the ATIS. We got Bravo United. They got 76. that already. That's another step in the procedure. Good night. 3565. Thanks for all your help. She United sounds pretty 76. chipper to me. Like just another day at the office. Okay, that's good. I like that. First United 1176, 6000, expecting an ILS to it, right? 1176, North Calipers, we're going to maintain 4000, flighting 040. 4000, 040, we're doing it. United 1176. All right, so they're coming around. They get lined up for 2 8 right? Uh, 1176, you're 900 miles from maximum turn left heading 310, maintain 2600. And so, establish on local object, clear to ILS 2 8 right approach. 2600, so established, clear for the ILS 2 8 right approach, and 1176. All right, and clear for the approach. Uh, 1176, contact San Francisco Tower, 120.5. 120.5 United 1176. So one of the things I'm going to brief as the captain, even if the first officer is flying the approach, is this. We're going to come in faster than normal. When you have a lower flap setting, like 15, 20, 
uh, you're going to, you have to have more speed. So it's going to be, your sight picture is going to be off. And um, the airplane is going to land flatter than normal. Normally, I have kind of a nose up attitude. It's going to be kind of flat. That's going to feel a little awkward. But let's get that airplane down in the first thousand foot of the runway. Let's not float down that runway because we're going a lot faster. And a 737 lands fast anyway. So their normal VREF speeds are a little bit higher than, uh, you know, other airplanes. Tower unit 1176, IRS 2A right. 1176, Mr. Tower, and a left from State Base, airport wind 2406, on which way right, go to left. Go ahead, right, playing a left turn to vacate, United 1176. Okay, here they come. And they have an uneventful landing on 28 right. Um, the crew did a really wonderful job getting everything done, multiple checklists, multiple communications that they have to do. And at the same time, they got to make sure that they don't overspeed the flaps and they don't um, go too slow that they stall the airplane. So there's a lot of things to pay attention to. It's a very, very busy evolution. Uh, in my 42 years of flying in... Um, all sorts of different types of airplanes. I've never had a flap malfunction. Now, I know a lot of you have, but I've never had one. Uh, but I've practiced for one every single year of my entire aviation career. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.